אני אוהב happy to be here uh, on behalf of Microsoft I would like to thank all of you for using Visual Studio and and most importantly for being loyal customers of Microsoft so give yourselves hand please give yourselves hand thank you thank you because of you guys because of you developers C++ developers we continue pushing ourselves innovating new products new technologies and we are here to present Visual Studio 2012 in conjunction with Windows 8. Uh, my name is Ulzi Lovsambat. Uh, I, I work in the C++, Visual C++ compiler team as well as the IntelliSys team. Uh, I am a principal test lead. I'm in charge of the quality of the C++ compiler and the IntelliSense parser. So if you ever hated that feature, if you found bugs, it's because of me or my team. You can blame me, okay? It's my fault. <laughs> we will continue to make it better, better going forward with your help. So, I see that um, as I was watching, I've been talking, walking around. Uh, most of you are very interested. Some of you are tired, falling asleep. I don't want you to fall asleep. If you fall asleep, it, it, it shows that I'm not a good speaker, okay? So if I see somebody falling asleep, I'm going to call on you and I'm going to ask you a question. Okay? So be sure to stay awake. And I'm going to do my best to keep you entertained and engaged and show you cool stuff. Okay? My, uh, my presentation today is mostly demo. We, uh, we, will, we will create an application from scratch on Windows 8 using C++ and show you how easy it is to get up and going and, and get a, a full-pledged, full-fidelity application uploaded into the Windows Store. Okay? All right, so let's get started. First, uh, first few slides, I will talk about what's new. Basically, from my talk, if you want to remember one thing, you know, if, if, I'm going to throw a bunch of stuff. If, if, if it's, there's too many stuff to remember, just think about XAML and C++. That's, that's the key takeaway from my talk, okay? If, if you're too tired, there's too much information, just remember that. Uh, using C++, now you can actually create UI applications, very rich, very rich in UI, using the best designer in the world to develop fully native C++ applications and have your application run on Windows 8 and Windows 8 based devices. That means servers, PCs, laptops, touch screens, slates, netbooks, whatever, you know, all, all the way down to phone. And C++ can do that. So, as, uh, as Ayman uh, mentioned earlier, uh, using VS 2012, you can basically develop these kind of three app models. One, which I'm going to demo, XAML. You can, you know, up until now, C++, Visual C++ developers, when it came, when it came to UI development, they didn't, have a, they didn't have it easy. They've had a hard time. Why? If you think about it, you only had MFC, right? MFC, back in VS 2008, we added some more controls, ribbon-based controls in MFC. Before that, you had uh, .NET-based WinForms. Other than that, there was nothing in Visual Studio that allowed you to develop UI applications. While, meanwhile, C Sharp and VB have been reaping on the latest and the best technology, such as XAML. U using XAML, they were able to target Silverlight and WPF framework and, and, and write very rich applications. What I'm saying right now is you can do that with C++. Also, 
uh, HTML5 and JavaScript applications can also call into C++, native C++ libraries and components. Think about that. What does that mean? In JavaScript HTML5 applications running in a browser calling into native C++ APIs and components. Think about it. That's very cool. That is very cool. All this C++ is old. It's over 30, 40 years old, you know? So there are, there are many algorithms and, and uh, APIs available in C++, but they can't all be used in, in modern technologies. Using C++ CX on Windows 8, it creates that bridge. It connects you to the old world, to the new world. And that's HTML JavaScript. And as usual, DirectX is available on desktop application as well as in the Windows Store applications. As I mentioned, um, because we use XAML, which is XML based, we have a very rich designer blend that is fully integrated into Visual Studio. And as usual, C++ is always power and performance. That is still the case. That is why, that is the single reason why developers around the world flock to C++. Because they want to write code that gets down to the metal of the device. They don't want to run through some jitting or runtime dynamic conversions or APIs and none of that, right? You write code, it should, ex it should execute exactly the way you want it on the device. That's what C++ gives you. So, here's a, a very quick overview. There's a very one view into what C++, Visual C++ does inside uh, Windows Store. A, Visual Studio 2012 comes with project templates. You don't have to write the boilerplate code from scratch. There are templates already that help you get up and going. It already gives you the blank UIs and the layouts and the XAML, the component, everything. It makes it very easy to get start up. Blend, as I mentioned, uh, is available for C++, meaning you can, you can design your UI without knowing anything about the code. You can give you can design your application and give the UI part to a guy who doesn't, speak, who doesn't know anything about programming and tell him to design your UI. And you can independently program against those UI components that's designed in Blend. That is very cool. When I tried it first, I was amazed. I was amazed. It was, it was, it was amazing. As usual, uh, with the new C++ CX uh, extensions, the language extension, the code understanding features, IntelliSense, Object Browser, everything is up to par to native C++ and C Sharp. IntelliSense works. It's, it's accurate. It's in your face. You no longer have to wait. Uh, uh, against the WinRT, WinRT is the name for the Windows 8 runtime the new Windows 8 runtime, WinRT. So from now on, when I say WinRT, it means Windows 8 runtime. For the Windows 8 runtime, we have implemented new language extensions called C++ CX and library extensions. What the library extensions are, are basically making it easy for you to program against the new Windows 8 APIs. Why? In the new Windows 8 APIs, over 90% of them are asynchronous APIs. Asynchronous APIs make it very easy uh, and, and performant of your applications. Your applications become robust when they run because they are asynchronous. However, if you have programmed against asynchronous APIs, it's, it's very difficult to do a, a, a deterministic programming calling into asynchronous APIs. Thus, we have provided a new set of extensions in the Parallel Patterns Libraries, PPL, for uh, async APIs, as well as debugging. 
you know, how can you have a Visual Studio and not have a good debugging story? When you are creating an application and you need, to, you need to make sure your application runs on Windows 8 as well as Windows 8 Slate, the, the new surfers or Samsung Slates, right? You know, you're not going to have all those available to you. There's a simulator. There's a simulator that simulates all the gestures, all the sensors of a device on your host machine. So you can debug it real time right there. As well as if you have the devices handy, you can always do remote debugging on the devices. And as part of the template, we provide the manifest packaging information so that it's easy for you to deploy your application to the store. All right. So let's, uh, let's move a little faster. Uh, C++ CX, I, I, I know what you're thinking, you know. Uh, Microsoft again, you know, they, they're, they're just creating new languages, languages whenever they want, telling people to learn a new thing, you know, without even asking you. Did we come and ask you, can we create a new language for you? You know, no, we didn't ask. So it's not like that. It may, you may perceive it like this, but that is not the case here. This is not a new language. This is an extension to C++. It is merely making it easy for you to code against the new Windows 8 runtime. That's all it's doing. It is fully compile time generated, meaning when I write a, a one line of code, that one line of code will be expanded by the compiler itself during build so that when the compilation is ended, the code that you end up with will be native code. Yeah? So it, it, it is not a new language. Um, obviously, with these new extensions, it is, uh, the types are all strongly typed, automatically reference counted, meaning you don't, you don't have to keep track of your objects. They are automatically ad ref and released, depending on what the scopes are. Compiler will generate the right code to handle these kind of things. Exception based, meaning you can throw a strong exception type full fidelity exception type from one component and you can catch it using that type on a different component. Meaning, you can throw an exception from JavaScript code running inside browser and you can catch that on the C++ CX component. Powerful, it's very powerful. And deep integration to STL. Because, wh why? Because it is C++. It is the language is C++. As I mentioned, it's native code. Here are some essentials of the C++ CX extensions. Ref class is how you create a new runtime class. Ref new is how you create a new object. This is how you activate a runtime class. Hat, or that uh, funky looking thing right there, is a pointer that is reference counted. But essentially it's a pointer. All the operations allowed on a pointer is allowed. Collections.h is a header file that provides the implementations for collections provided by the new Windows 8 runtime. Uh, do, translators, do I need to slow down? Oh, I need, no? Good? No good? Good. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't even see. Uh, Anyway, I, I will slow down a little bit. Uh, PPL tasks is the new tasks extensions that have new uh, APIs that help you program against the new asynchronous APIs. And properties event delegates, these are the new, uh, not new, but if you know C Sharp, you already know these uh, members of a class that have specific characteristics. Here's an example of a runtime class. Every runtime class that is publicly accessible, meaning with a public keyword, is emitted to the Windows 8 metadata. Okay, so a person class has public members which will be emitted to the metadata, and non-public members will not be, and they can be regular C++ code. And on the using side, as you can see, it's, uh, it's fairly simple, it's straightforward, nothing really need to be said here. 
Uh, as I mentioned, the C++ object, the C++ CX object lifetime management is completely ref counted. You don't have to keep track of your object management. You don't need to keep track of the ref counting. You don't need to call delete or the destructors, you know, in, in the native code. You just don't worry about it. Just leave it, forget about it, you know? And compiler will generate the code for you, the right code. It makes it very easy. If you, if you have um, written code against COM using C++, you know how painful it is, right? Essentially, C++ CX is making COM and C++ simple. That's one way to see it. Uh, string always is one of the most widely used types in C++. So there is a new string, platform string in C++ CX, which is implicitly convertible to STL type, STL string type, as well as the CWHRT array type. And these are all the operations that are allowed on a string. I don't, I don't need to go through all this. I mean, you can always experience, uh, experiment it yourself later on. So, collections, as I mentioned, the new Windows runtime provides uh, these collections in each language, C++, C Sharp, and v, uh, VB, and JavaScript, they provide the implementations for these collections. We, C++, in VS 2012, provide implementations for vector, vector view, map, and map view in collection.h file. Um, this is an example of an async programming. Uh, if, you, if you didn't have the PPL extensions, a programming against an, a, an async API would, would actually take this much code. Essentially, async programming means I'm calling an API function, right? In this case, I'm calling create file async, right? It returns immediately because it's async. But the actual operation happens in the background behind the scene, right? So you have to add more code to actually, f actually figure out the operation is completed in the background until you go on with your code. With the PPL tasks, this code is simplified. You call the function, you use that object, create an instance of a task here at the bottom, right? And you just call the dot then method of the task class to execute your code when the operation is done. Simple as that. All right, um, I think some of you raised your hands for XAML. Uh, simply put, XAML is an, uh, an XML based, a declarative UI framework. It's a very fancy name to say, right? But essentially it's XML, it's just XML. Using XML, you define, you declare the layout of your UI components. That's all you're doing. That's all you're doing. And Windows 8 and Visual Studio provides a, comp a compiler parser that converts that XML file into C++ or C Sharp or VB and compile that code and run it against the Windows runtime, the Windows 8 runtime. And the Windows 8 runtime knows how to render these types. And that is exactly what we will see today, just now, right now, in, in, uh, in our demo. How, how am I doing on time? Do, do I have like uh, 30 minutes or so? Yes, no? Doesn't matter? <laughs> okay. All right, uh, here's an example of uh, XAML working with C++. I have a button, I've got some attributes of the button, and I have a click event handler that defines what the function is to be called when the event is uh, raised. This XML code gets translated into, by the markup language compiler, into this C++ code, and then down here is where users can add their code to handle the specific event. One of the most powerful features of XAML is data binding. Data binding. What it means is you can, you can lay out your UI component. Let's say I'm gonna lay out a picture. But I don't know 
the pro specific properties of the picture. I don't know how many pictures they are, how big they are, the resolution, you know, I, who knows. But in my, in my XML, in my XML, I can just say, hey, I'm gonna, there's gonna be some pictures or there's gonna be some data, the value, right? When it comes, it'll be initialized at runtime. When it's, your application is running, it will be initialized at runtime. When it's initialized, I want you, I, I want this field, that field, to derive its value from a property of a runtime class. So, here I have a runtime class called feed item, and I have a, a, a property called title. That title will be initialized when the code is executing at runtime, and then data, whatever, whatever the value is, will be fed into my XAML, which will, which will then be rendered real time in my application. That's, that's pretty cool, eh? So we'll, we'll see, uh, we'll do an uh, example. All right, so with this, let's go into, whoa, what's going on? Okay, just, just give me uh, one second to uh, set up my... Uh Good. All right, so let's write, let's write an application, okay, using C++ and XAML that will load pictures, and after it loads pictures, it will find faces of people inside the pictures, and it will render those faces beneath the pictures, okay? Just the kind of application you would write in C++. Why? Because it's complicated. It's very complex. I'm, ta I'm talking about looking for faces inside a picture, random pictures, you know? Okay, so let's do that. Let, let, let's see if we can do it. I call the application XAML Face Finder, okay? And I have already pre-populated some of the project. So I will double click here to open up the solution. Notice how quickly it opens. As I mentioned earlier, right? You, you don't need to wait around, you don't need to go to the bathroom, you don't need to tell your boss, oh, I gotta go smoke, you know? Because then Visual Studio is taking so long to load. You no longer can use that excuse. We fixed it for you. It's done. As soon as your solution loads, you can start working. Even when your solution has over 1,000 projects, we will do asynchronous loading in the background. So you can start, start working right away. Uh, this here is a small project, so it doesn't really <laughs> demonstrate, but uh, trust me. Okay, so what is happening here? I have a C++ project when I look at the Solution Explorer, I see some C++ files as well as some new stuff here. Something called XAML, as well as something called Apex Manifest. So let's see what happens when I click on the XAML. I don't want to rename it, but uh, let's double click on it. So what's happening right now is the XAML file, the XAML right here, is loading. Okay, this, uh, this thing is very annoying. So, XAML loaded here, and then this here is the designer. If I make a change in the designer, if I add a new button or do whatever, right, it will be real-time reflected on the XAML and vice versa. If I make a change in the XAML, it will be reflected back in the designer. So, let's, uh, let's close down the designer, and I want to actually show you the XML version of the XAML file. So here, it's simple. Everything in XAML is inside a grid. And then I have a text block that says XAML face finder. And then I have a grid view, basically will render my pictures that I will load. But look what's happening here. In my grid view, I said, hey, I'm gonna derive my value of the pictures from this property called input file list, right? When these pictures come, I want you to put in the row number one inside the grid, 
And here's the margins, and this is what you're going to do. That's all I'm going to tell. I don't need to define anything else. The runtime, Windows 8 runtime will figure out what to do in, in laying out the pictures. All right, so let's, uh, let's do build and run it. There you go, the app is running. On Windows 8, Windows Store applications always run full screen. Okay, so it's running full screen. When I do right click, I bring up the application bar, which has two buttons, load photos and detect faces. Load photos is the button that will load, will give me the ability to load the pictures. Obviously nothing is happening right now because we must go and implement that. So let's terminate the application, stop debugging. Let's see what's happening here. Go back to the solution explorer. Can, can, can you see the code all right back there? The code is visible, you can read. Raise your hand if you can't see. Uh, okay. Just one person, so just get closer. <laughs> um, what was I doing? All right, so I'm going to bring up this file. This is the CPP implementation file. In it, I have these event handlers. There's one called load button. This is where I will be implementing the uh, event for load button, uh, load pictures button. Here's a bunch of code snippets that I have written before. So trust me, I wrote this before. Okay, so I will just add this code that I wrote. <laughs> All right, so what did I just paste here? All right, this is an example of C++ CX code working with regular C++ STL uh, functions and calling into some of the new Windows 8 APIs. For example, I'm calling into, I'm creating an instance of this runtime class called file open picker. What is file open picker? How, how do I, how did I know to create an instance of this uh, class? That, because I work at Microsoft, I knew, right? Or you can do, go to definition on the file, on the, on the uh, symbol, and it will give you in the object browser the layout of the new Windows 8 runtime. Look how beautiful this is. Isn't this beautiful? This is beautiful. Compare this, compare this to Windows.h. Not beautiful. Beautiful. Why? It's very nicely organized. It, it is integrated to the object browser inside Visual Studio, and it's totally navigatable. And you see C++ code snippets. That's a lot of work. My, my team worked on that. That's a lot of work. <laughs> so don't, don't ignore that, OK? <laughs> so uh, the new Windows 8 runtime, everything is inside Windows namespace. And you can totally navigate through this, and every code element here will have a value, a valid, um, what? Valid uh, code, C++ code. He was, he was trying to talk to me back there. Anyway, all right, so that's file open picker. I created an instance of that. Notice I'm also using one of the C++11 features. I in initialize some of the properties, and I'm calling into API called pick multiple files async. Okay, the async name also obviously tells me that it's an async operation. And as I mentioned, I'm going to use the task class to handle this uh, async operation. When I call this function, it will immediately return. But that's not what I'm interested. I'm interested in when the, the user has selected all the pictures. Then I want to do some stuff. So I created a task, and then I call the dot then method, and then I provide a lambda, which will capture the pictures that have been selected in a vector. And I use the stl 4 each iterator function to iterate over that vector of pictures, and then I initialize 
this runtime property which is bound to my XAML at runtime to display the pictures. All right, so let's see, uh, let's see what's happening here. Let's do a build. Uh, I'm sorry, this, uh, this thing is not straight. It's tilted, so my, my mouse keeps falling down. Uh, it's a little uh, difficult. All right, so now my uh, load button should be implemented. When I click on this, wow. Wow, what is this? What is this? Did, did I write a new UI that uh, gave me this beautiful UI? No, right? All I did was I created an instance of file open picker. That's all I did. Just one instance of file open picker gave me access to this beautiful UI that is available to all Windows 8 store applications. And that's, that's how easy it is to make use of existing Windows 8 APIs. See? It gave me an open access to, to my computer. I mean, to uh, file open picker UI. So I pick pictures. I select all the pictures. As soon as I click open, my application will asynchronously load because I called the async app, right? Asynchronously load the pictures. There you go. There you go. See, all the pictures are loaded. Did I, did I worry about how the pictures were going to be laid out, the sizes, none of that, right? It was handled by the Windows 8 runtime using data, data binding. Okay. Next step is to implement detect faces. Obviously, nothing's going to happen. So let's kill the application, move on. You know, uh, I'm, uh, I'm OK. You know, I, can, I can write C++ code. But I cannot write detecting faces inside a picture in C++ in a few minutes. That's just impossible. That is an extremely difficult task, right? But the beauty of C++ is somebody has always done something somewhere, right? Somewhere. Just like that 92-year-old guy, right? When he was 27 years old, he wrote a library called OpenCV. <laughs> okay, I'm joking here, but in, you know. Like, he, like somebody has always written something. So let's, let's try to find something on the internet using uh, Bing, OK? Not Google, Bing. And to my dismay, uh, I actually find an API called OpenCV that does exactly that. It looks for objects, patterns inside a picture. So once I have found that, I created an extension SDK using that uh, API, and I made it available for my project. So I come here. I do add and reference, and I select OpenCV. If you are a component or library writer, you can create an extensions SDK for your customers and upload it to the Windows Store. And you can make money using that. This guy who wrote OpenCV can make money off of that, just like this. When I create this uh, uh, reference, add reference to this uh, extension SDK, it is now added and available to my project. Notice, I didn't have to mess with my include path. I didn't have to mess with my lib path. I didn't have to go muck around with the macros and make changes in there, you know? None of that. All I did was I added an extension SDK package, and it beautifully integrated into my project system. All I have to do now is start writing code against it as if I have the code here. Okay, so obviously we need to lay out. We need to lay out the uh, the XAML code for the faces. So I come here, do this. What I'm doing here is very simple. I'm creating another grid view called face grid view. 
in, in the second row, which will basically load all the faces come from this property at runtime. Done. Right? Now what I need to do is go to the event handler function for the button to actually implement the code to invoke into OpenCV library. So I come back here again, find the code that I wrote before, and what I'm doing right here is I'm creating an instance of WinRT component which is inside OpenCV and calling this API which will give me the list of um, the faces that's detected. And when the task is done, I don't care. I don't need to do anything. I just want the pictures to start showing up as they are found. I'm not interested when the task is completed. So I'm giving it an empty uh, lambda here. Okay? All right, so let's see what's happening. I do the build again. <clears throat> All right, so application started up running. I do right click to bring up the application bar, also known as app bar, to load photos. I'm going to select all these pictures, load, oh look, size is first now. Now I s detect faces. The faces should asynchronously show up because I've called the async API. And look at all these faces. These are faces being dynamically recognized from the pictures that I have loaded into my application using OpenCV. What's happening? What is happening behind the scene? I'm writing, imagine this application running on Windows 8 phone. Imagine it's running on your uh, tablet, PC, or laptop, touch screen. All this is touch screen enabled already by default. If this was running on a touch screen, I could, I could select this guy by touching. I could scroll up and down. All that stuff is by default enabled. You don't have to do a single thing to enable that. Okay? So, the, the, the key here is, the key thing here is, I'm writing this very modern, very, you know, up-to-date application using C++ and, and showing it on uh, devices that everybody's using, yet I'm calling into very old C++ API that's probably written 20, 30 years ago, you know? The C++ CX connects you to new technology and old technology, and it brings it to, you, to your face right there on the device. That's the beauty. That is, the, that is one of the main differences from C++, C Sharp, VB, and JavaScript. And hopefully you can see that, okay? So, quickly, just to show that I'm not cheating you by loading some pictures that, pre, you know, sort of, you know, worked on, uh, let's, uh, you know, let's bring up the app bar, let's load for, instead of loading pictures, let's uh, load pictures from the camera, right? There you go. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. So, so let's do an experiment. Okay. What we're gonna do is, uh, I will. Uh, I'm gonna take some uh, picture of the front row here. Looks good, guys. You, uh, <clears throat> uh, this may not work, but it's okay. Let's just give it a try, yeah? Okay. 
All right, so we got some people here. Pictures are kind of blurry, so let's see how the, the, uh, the, uh, the algorithm works. Oh, hey, look at that. <laughs> Two. Two of you are humans. <laughs> this is looking for human faces inside a picture, right? And then, I don't know what the rest of you are. Okay. Anyways, so let's, uh, let's take this guy. Now, the beautiful thing, okay, one of the, uh, oh, I only have five minutes. One of the main uh, attractions of Windows 8 is it has contracts. You can write applications against these contracts. One of the contracts, for example, is share. When you bring up the charm bar here, you see that search and share, right? If I click on this share, I should be able to share what is selected in my application. Nothing is happening now. Why? Because I didn't implement the function on my application to provide the data to be shared, right? So in the last four minutes that I have, let's quickly uh, implement that. To do that, you come here. Excuse me. I come here and implement this function called onDataRequested. It is a virtual function. Whenever you invoke, thank you. When you, whenever you invoke the share contract, this function is called polymorphically. Virtual call is made. And if you have this function implemented on your application, then the data will be provided. So what I'll do here is I'll come here and put the code and rerun. Oh, it's still working. All right, so I load, uh, load some uh, photos. I'm not going to use the camera. I'm going to use pictures again. Just make it, uh, all right, uh, get the faces detected. Ooh, look at that. Kim Tae came out first. So let's, let's share Kim Tae here. Yeah? I'm going to select her, bring up the share, look at that. What this means is Mail and SkyDrive are the two applications that have registered themselves with the Windows 8 operating system that said, hey, I can share JPEG files. If anybody wants to share JPEG files of this format, show me in the share contract list. So I say, okay. I'll do this, and look at that. The picture that's selected is already embedded as an attachment inside the mail application. All I had to do was implement that one function, and I get this feature. And this is all touch enabled. This, is, this will work exactly how you see on a touch screen tablet. And it's, look, I'm using a mouse. Works just as good on a desktop or laptop. All right, so that is the end of the demo. And in fact, that is the end of my talk. <laughs>